This is The Wheel Weaves, a Wheel of Time podcast with no spoilers. Hey everyone, I'm your host Annie, and I'm the first time reader going through this series chapter by chapter. As always, there's no spoilers past the chapter we're covering, and that means it's totally safe for first time readers. I'm joined by my co-host Brett, who's a longtime fan, and he's guiding me on this journey. We'd like to thank and acknowledge our executive producers, Brandy Nairn Kirkwood, Sean McGuire, Yanis, Life Blinded Fool, Green Man, Davis Ferreira, Margaret, Big C, Bennett Williamson, Dylan C, Hannah Green, Noralia, Jordan Gower, Jeff Searles, Eric Reed, Grayson Ishara, and Ashley Bradley. Now, we would like to thank all of our patrons who renewed their annual pledge to support us for a whole nother year. Thank you so much to Sarah O'Malley, Crystal and Jed, Lance Barden, A.V. Tara, Elizabeth Davis, Kursuvra, and Jeff Renholtz. And a special thank you to Koala Sedai, who not only renewed her pledge, but increased it as well. Thank you so much for your continued support. You have no idea how much it means to us and really helps us keep this podcast going. And before we get into things today, we want to thank and welcome Heather C. and Rhiannon Kruger to the Wheel Weaves Patreon team. Thank you so much for your support and your generosity. It really means so much to us. In this episode, we are talking about Chapter 4 and Chapter 5 of The Gathering Storm. Yeah, Chapter 4 is Nightfall, and Chapter 5 is A Tale of Blood. And before you get too you guys, smug about this... I did this, it. I did it. Yeah, you did. You wore I me wore down. I you right down. I finished <laughs> Chapter 4. It took me three seconds to read. I thought, Brett, we cannot do one episode yeah. on Chapter 4. It is the dinkiest And then two weeks of just... Coming at me <laughs> to, to revisit the schedule. So I, I did. I revisited thank the you. schedule. Thank you. And everyone else can thank me too. Yes. Okay. Because I did my due diligence of wifely nagging. Yes. And, and you're I... like, hey, it doesn't matter if you have other things to do. <laughs> <laughs> I want to read more. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Well, and also I want our episodes to be of substance, you know? Sure. No, I get it. I get it. I get it. So <laughs> we don't need to revisit this again. <laughs> so I've replanned the book, basically, good, and we're doing good. more double chapters. Yes. Okay. Good. So this one will be two chapters. Next cool. episode will also, also be, two, be chapters. two chapters. And then there are more in the future, too. So yeah. you're welcome, I guess. Yeah. Okay. What can I say except you're welcome? <laughs> <laughs> so that's great. Also, this is the first episode we're recording of 2024. That's true. So okay. how about that? Yeah. We're a week in. Yes. yes. We had some holidays. Yep, we did. We took too much time off. <laughs> yeah. And now we're going to cram to get everything done exactly. this month. Exactly. Because yep. this one comes out immediately. Mm-hmm. Okay. Mm-hmm. So here we go. Let me start you off with the good fun fact about the books. Okay. Because we're still dabbling into the Brandon Sanderson sure. stuff and the release after so long being away. So there were a few samples published leading up to the release of The Gathering Storm. So chapter one and chapter two were released for free on September 4th and 23rd back in 2009. And the book was released October 27th. So about a month and a half to two months before the book came out, people got chapters one and chapters two. Mm. And then... In between that, on September 17th, an ebook of the prologue was released for purchase. So people, if they wanted to, they could actually buy the prologue and get to experience that too, which is pretty cool. Okay. Now, after the release, it did hit the top of the New York Times bestseller list as per usual, because that's kind of what the books did. But I looked up this, and apparently they did for the initial print run about 1 million books. Now, I know nothing about how book publishing yeah, really how works. Many, is that a lot? Is that not yeah. a lot? So I don't know. No and idea. I also don't know how they publish books. So apparently I mean, a there's a million like, books sounds like a lot of books. But that's like the initial print run. And then that's for like the initial release. And then they have subsequent releases or publishes publishing of the books. I don't really know. Anyways, okay. like the initial print run was about a million. Okay. Now, on average for like a new author, there'd be like three to five thousand copies. An average would be like 50,000 for like a well-known author. So a million for the initial print runs, pretty good. Is a freaking lot. Yes, but I also had to do like some sort of comparison to Harry Potter, obviously. Oh, Harry Potter. Okay. Yeah. Because... No, I thought you were going to compare to like Knife of Dreams, you know. Oh, yeah. No, I don't. Oh, I, you don't have that. Okay. I don't even know how to look this stuff okay. up really. So <laughs> Harry Potter is the most popular. Sure. Okay. <laughs> so that's what I could find. Okay. So the initial print run of book seven, the last one of Harry Potter. Yes. 12 million. Oh, yeah. Yeah, which, I mean, it's in a bit of a different ballpark, so, like, I don't want to compare yeah. on that level. But just for context, a million, still yeah. pretty good. For Harry Potter, I waited in line. Yeah. At midnight. Yeah. 
the day before it came out okay, to, fair. to get it. Fair. So I was one of those 12 million. I guess so. I think that's how it works. Yeah. I have to assume. And does that also mean we're going to take some shots? Did you just do that? I, I did. Well, it's a fun fact, so I don't know if it counts. You, compa- you said it. And we did receive some new shot glasses. Okay, that's true. You know what? Let's do it. Okay. Before I go up to get them, though, do you have anything else? Or is that does that wrap it up? Uh, two more things. Okay. <laughs> okay, so then on the release, Brandon Sanderson actually supported the release. He did a 25-city book signing tour, and Harriet McDougall was at some of those events, too, to support, which is pretty cool. And then the audiobook version was also a finalist in the Audis of 2010, which is apparently the award show for the audiophiles, okay. I guess. Like the audiobook? Yeah, the okay. audiobook. So they came finalists. That was pretty cool in the sci-fi and fantasy category. Cool. So good for everybody. Yeah. All right. Okay. So I got a big box of shot glasses. Yeah, it's like jangling when you're coming down the <laughs> stairs. <laughs> <laughs> so these shot glasses are from our good friends, Debbie and her sister, Gabrielle. Awesome. This is okay. not the first time yep. that they've sent us glasses before. And so there's a whole mix in here. All right. Now, the first one that I'm excited about, but we're not drinking out of, okay. is Verona. Okay. So... Is that because we, we have a Verona one? We do have a Verona shot glass because we've actually been to Verona. We can save that one for later. We can save it and oh, we take... we can do a Verona thing. We can do a Verona thing. I like thing. it. Okay. Yeah. So that's the city of Romeo and Juliet in Italy. Yeah. And so that's a really cool one. Debbie and Gabrielle went to the opera there. Very cool. Yeah. We almost did. And then we didn't have money. To right. <laughs> go to it, and instead we just drank some wine. All the other places got all over across the street from the amphitheater. <laughs> right. <laughs> okay. Um, the other two that we have here are from Jordan. Okay. So they traveled to Petra, which they imagine the Aiel living. Okay. In. Like it's kind of like super deserty. Makes sense. I see camels there. So camels on the Jordan shot glasses. So we'll right. save those for another time. And now the two that we are taking shots out of. So I have a good old fashioned Holland shot glass with windmills, windmills on it. <laughs> and I love it so love much. It. Mine looks pretty cool. Yeah. Yours is, is from it? the Greek island of Kos. Oh, okay. Okay. It's neat. It's like it black is cool. and gold. I like it. It's like got the eyeballs on it. It does. Yeah. Okay. That's a lot, but we really appreciate it. Thank you, Debbie. Yeah, thank you. Cheers. And cheers. Ooh. <laughs> that was a big one. Okay. Nope. No, no, no. Ah. <clears throat> <laughs> oh, I didn't like that. That's my first drink. Oh, no, that's not true. <laughs> I was going to say. I Are you going to say a 2024? I didn't drink this week that's good good for you we drank on the first sure we had a little bit to drink on the first right But then we're like today doesn't count because it's a leap year and technically we had drank after midnight anyway so like why why are we but since then sure i haven't drank at all this week i cannot say the same i know (laughs) we we went back to D. &D. &D. what am i supposed to do not drink exactly okay all right all right where do we start? Chapter four. Let's get into it. Gawain. Nightfall. Oh my god. Let's get into the Never headspace mind. of this guy. Can we just skip it? How is this? We've been wondering Here, I'll what give he's a been summary. up to. I'll give a summary. Gawain's a moron. Oh yeah. Okay. I was going to ask how you. he's doing a bunch of stuff that he knows he shouldn't be doing and doesn't want to be doing, but he's just doing it anyway. Right. Right. How and does that's it. it. That's, how does it make you that's feel? It. That's the whole chapter. Tell us how you feel about that. I hate him. <laughs> I hate him worse than I hate Elida, and it's the same since book four. Oh, no. I can't stand him. He okay. annoys the shit out of me. Okay. He's like, oh, I'm on the wrong side, but no, there's nothing no, I can do about this. No, he says, maybe I'm on the wrong side. <laughs> He says, maybe. (laughs) That's it. That's the whole summary of this chapter. (laughs) When I closed the book, I was like, there's no way that I'm talking for like an hour about this. It could have been half an hour. No. We could have killed 25 minutes with the the shots and the fun fact. (laughs) (laughs) Spent five minutes on him. That's fine. Okay. All right. So we have our chapter symbol of the wheel and snake. And we're in Gawain's perspective. And it's evening, and Gawain's on a hilltop close to Tarvalin with some of his younglings, and they're watching some soldiers. Yeah. And at first, you don't really know what's going on. It's not immediately clear what's happening. No. And I'm like, what are they looking at now? Just like, I thought maybe they were like on cleanup crew of Tarvalin sure, or sure. something, you know? You know how it's like a mess? Oh, yeah. It's and garbage. Like, and there's like thieves and stuff everywhere. Right. Yeah. So I wasn't quite sure, but So here's the thing. Yeah. Gawain and his younglings aren't allowed inside of Tarvalin. They're like they don't they don't go in this like they're okay. not inside. They're outside in this they're in Cheese Town. 
Still? Y- Dorlin, yeah. That's the entire point of this whole chapter. Oh, jeez. They the should entire... go somewhere and do something else. Yeah, no, they've been there. They're still, that's like their home base. And that's the <laughs> entire point of this whole conversation. Oh, jeez. Okay. Yeah. Oh. So anyways, they're they're in Cheesetown and that's, you know. Okay. Well, no, they're heading to some small village that's not Cheesetown. Well, yeah. Th- okay. So their ho- their base of operations is Dorlin, Cheesetown. Okay. And they are going around to all the villages and stuff and like, do, they're like a little raiding party against Gareth Brynn. Okay, yeah. So these soldiers yeah. are rebel soldiers with Gareth Brynn and yes. the rebel Aes Sedai. And the rebel Aes Sedai go to all the tiny, tiny villages all over the countryside to buy supplies and maybe recruit soldiers and do some stuff, hang out, do right. some inspections. But Gawain's force is like a raiding. Sometimes they attack, sometimes they don't. Right now they're not. Right. So... Okay. Anyways, yeah, that's the summary of the chapter. Whoops. <sighs> yeah. Okay. Okay. Well, there's someone with Gawain. Yeah, he's one of Gawain's main dudes. We've heard his name before. Okay. Just Sal. Just Sal. Just Sal. He's like, let's engage them. Then yeah. That'll be fun. We're yeah. doing nothing. This is boring. Yeah. And Gawain's like, no, we're watching them. We're figuring out what they're doing and we're leaving. Yeah. They came here because they're like maybe going to do something, but now they're not. So there's tw- there's about 12 guys down in the town, like with the rebels. There's about 12 soldiers, and Gawain has about 50 guys here. Okay. So they could take them if they want to. Well, they could, except that these guys are in this village to pay for supplies and food and then leave. Yeah. Like, Gawain's force to, like, take them out at this point. Like, why? Just because they're rebels, basically? Yeah, raiding yeah. party. Yeah. To harry Gareth Bryn's forces. Yeah. Which is like, ooh, you got them. Yeah. You got those 12 guys buying some food. Well, and the, the problem right now, too, is that Bryn's, ra- like, the force, the rebel force, they're actually pretty nice to all the villages. Like, they pay for yep. supplies. They're not, like, hurting anyone. Nope. They're not saying no to more soldiers, like, if anyone wants yeah, to join. Yeah. But they're not also, they're not actively recruiting and, like, forcing people to join. Well, and they're also not attacking. Not attacking, yeah. yeah. So it's not... <laughs> There's, like, literally zero reason yeah. other than to, like, piss off Gareth Bryn. Exactly. And... That's why he's Gawain so... kind of knows it. He's, he's like, torn. Uh, am I going to kill all my mentors? Am I going <laughs> to fight with all of my mentors and it's everyone like, who's I taught me? I guess so, Gawain. That's <laughs> the choice you're making. Like, you don't have to do any of this. <laughs> These are... Yeah, okay. Yeah, he does think that because he's like, uh, am I destined... And we're jumping ahead, but he's yeah. like, am I destined to do this? Like, no, man, no. you're not destined to do any of this. Yeah. It's, you know, I like my saying, which, you know, everything happens for a reason. And sometimes that reason is because you're stupid and you make bad decisions. Yeah. <laughs> and that's Gawain right now. Is that none of this is destiny, my guy. No. Like, you are not important enough to the wheel. Yeah. <laughs> you're not a Tavir and, like, ran. No. Nope. Who's like, oh, I have to do things. Yeah, not <laughs> really. Like, no one's paying attention to you, but Not really. Anyways, All right. Okay. So, Gawain's like, listen, we came to check things out and we're not starting a fight, so. Well, there's villagers, it, like, there's children. It's not going to be worth it. Yeah. So, the end. I don't yeah. Know. <laughs> yeah. And Giselle's pretty disappointed because they came all this way for nothing. But it's all back and forth because he has th- he does think about this throughout the entire chapter here that his soldiers are pretty good soldiers and they're all the younglings. Yeah, they're yeah. they're all good soldiers. They all have experience and they're all going to be like wondering why we're not engaging this time. Yeah. But this is where he's like, hey, if we keep attacking these forces, it's going to basically put a, like point a straight line towards Dorlin, which is our home base of operations. So if we keep attacking all the raiding parties that are getting close to Cheese Town, Burn's going to pick up on he's like, gonna oh, figure it out because he's not a dummy. Yeah. Exactly, exactly. So like we strategically shouldn't be attacking right now. Yeah. And then we get this entire section where Gawain thinks about how he's surprised that the rebels managed to recruit Gareth Bryn, and he's super confused. He's like, shouldn't Gareth Bryn be in Camelin helping Elaine? Oh, yeah. <laughs> and then he's like, oh, what about my duty? I also should be in Camelin helping Elaine, it's but like, I'm yeah, just man. not. I'm just here literally doing nothing Yeah. in nothing town. He knows Elida wants to kill him. He knows he should be helping Elaine, and he's on the wrong side of things. And then he thinks, oh, well, Elaine and Egwene are just accepted, so they don't even matter anyway. <laughs> yes, it's, it's like, like the worst. You. I don't know. Like, <laughs> shut up, guys. It's ah! so bad. <laughs> <laughs> it's such a bad train of thought. He's like, ah, no, they were forced to do this, and I am, I don't know, much smarter than. Like, and then he's oh. like, huh? When I was making out with Egwene and Kyrian, and I was like, she did, she did and tell me. I was me. like, oh yeah, you made out a lot with Egwene and Kyrian at one yeah, point. Yeah, a bunch of secret meetups. Yeah, they did do that. And, and she was like, hey, I'm doing, I'm doing this. this on purpose. Yeah. No one's making me do anything. 
Ah, uh, but you know women. You, never mind that. Never no, mind. No, no time can't for that. Be that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so it's pretty bad because we have to and this is where it's like we we are still at the may have stage where he's like I may have chosen the wrong side. Yeah. I might have like I'm not I'm not a hundred percent there. I mean like it feels bad. Yeah. It feels bad what I'm doing. He's like, ah oh, I don't like what I'm doing. Egwene's on the other side, Elaine's on the other side, Gareth Cameron Bryn is on the other is, side. Coolin, yeah, like my old warder trainers were on the other side of this whole thing. Elida oh, definitely wants me killed. Gareth Bryn's on the other side. It's like, ooh, maybe I'm th- no, it's everyone else yeah. who's wrong. Well, and it's like the person whose side I'm on wants me dead. Right. And I know that for a fact because of the Dumais Well situation. Yeah. So And also also this, because apparently he's been tasked with being like this little harrying force, and he has about three hundred guys total against Bryn's army, which is like what, fifty fifty thousand. Yeah. It's yeah. like he's literally gonna get killed doing this. Yeah. He doesn't have the forces to do this. He should probably stop doing this and that's the tricky part with godwin is he he has sort of found his little niche like he's the leader of the younglings yeah that's true this is a guy who's I kind of been like like his side of things i know I, I, I like to try to come to a little bit of his defense like he has been pulled around a lot by different people he did think that his mom got killed by ryan yes we had a Gwen saying he didn't trust yeah. me she didn't really offer anything more than that no but it's just it's tough like he's yeah. He makes bad decisions. But he definitely knows that Elaine is in Camelin. He does know that. He somehow, does know that. And he's not going to her. Yeah. Which he absolutely could do. Yeah. That's his duty. There's still some Aes Sedai in Dorlin. Yeah. So, like, mm. just how does he know? Like, Elaine taking the throne is probably pretty big news. Yeah. Especially with the Aes Sedai. Yeah. So, it's not crazy that news got passed. Well, no. And we also don't exactly know when in time this is. That's if true. If it's still siege time or if it's... After siege time, like how much? How much after? Yeah, yeah. yeah. That's we totally don't fair. really know any of that. Yeah, but um, yeah, he's wavering and, and he, just sort of he knows not he doing, is. Yeah, yeah, because he's like, oh, at some point I'm gonna have to make a decision here which side I'm on. Yeah, but I want to be on both sides. Yeah, you can't you can't do that though, Galen. Yeah, <laughs> you gotta you gotta figure things out, especially because you're not a nobody. Yeah, you're not just a nobody from nowhere land. That's true. Like you're Gawain Tricand. You really have weight behind your name. You're clearly not a dummy. You well, well, yeah. <laughs> but I mean, like in terms of leadership, exactly. In like terms battle. of fighting skills, in terms of battle, like you're clearly somebody who knows a lot of things. And Elida just wants you to die, and you know that. Mm-hmm. So pull out your royalty card. Yep. And fuck off. Yeah. Leave. He could. He should. That, yeah. That that should that would be the move at this point. I agree. So, okay, so do you, you want to make this chapter a little bit spicier? Do you want me to throw a uh, theory, a conspiracy theory at you? Sure. That, like, was is has, yes. has floated please around. Please do. Please, yes. I don't want to, like, taint your no, thought process. No, please do. Okay. I, nope, I don't know how much more I can okay. be So when, pe- when when smart people make really bad decisions and they don't really know why they're making bad decisions, sometimes... They try to justify it? Well, no. Sometimes it's like, oh, maybe there's some sort of, like, nefarious influence over Gawain, oh. right? Because, like, we've seen people make, like, Morgays, right? Bad situation. She got compelled right. to make a lot of bad yeah. decisions and even people are coming to elida's defense a little bit saying she's been in contact with fane and she has been yeah so is there any sort of like outside nefarious influence that gowan <laughs> could have honestly no i think he's just making bad decisions i think that he's just and that's like in well, character. the problem is he's not making any decisions that's true he's right like now. yeah he's stuck in nothing land he like really is mm-hmm. yeah he's in limbo land with yeah about half of the forsaken yeah yeah well it's kind of like <laughs> if matt because Matt's the same kind of guy where he hasn't had any direction, but he just like kind of goes off and does stuff. Yeah. But like if he didn't have that Tavir and pull, Matt might be a similar character stuck in this like, like weird, like Except nothing that the place. The problem about Matt is he is no one from Nowhere Land. That's true. Right? He doesn't like, have Matt a big mission to go on. <laughs> he doesn't have a huge name and mm-hmm. an actual duty. And Gawain should be with the lane. Yes. Like, that is his literal That's duty. That's your literal duty. Yeah. That's where you should be right now. First Prince of the Sword. He's, he's like, not. He's there's not... a title for the job he's supposed to be. Because <laughs> <laughs> he's not a warder. Yeah. Like, let's say he's actually training and he's actually a warder. Yeah. Right? He was like, never supposed to be. <laughs> <laughs> like, if that's what he is, okay, well, then that's his new job, and we all sort of have to, like, Elaine, kind of, oh, I'm I Sedai, but also queen, and kind of have to deal with witches first yeah. kind of situation. Gawain doesn't have that. He's yeah. just an army leader. He's sort of Tar Valen's army, but, like, also not really. Take your lung- younglings yeah. and be like, we have a duty to Elaine and Camelin. Right. 
good there there's options here <laughs> that's really what should be happening right now okay do you think that we're maybe getting closer to maybe doing something maybe if anything what's gonna happen is he's gonna find out like Egwene's in the tower somehow and, oh like, no he's like lusty love might i have to go save him. her maybe <laughs> yeah i think that he's more likely to flop sides right rather than actually go help elaine how much is Egwene gonna hate that if yeah. gawain shows up get out of here <laughs> to rescue her oh my god i just think i like the matt rescuing the girls no, if anything oh, he'll man. go to the rebel camp Right. To okay. like talk to Bryn and be like, "Where's a Gwen?" And right. He, yeah. Yeah. That okay. Kind of thing. Like he might want to switch sides. Yeah. Like he, he'll be so dramatic about it. It's like I oh, love it. Yeah. <laughs> he He's be. like, "I've made a decision. I'm with the rebels now." Oh, see, no, you or, lost you me know? there because I can't see him saying I've made a decision. <laughs> Okay. All right. He'd be like, I may, have, I'm thinking about making a decision here. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah. Anyways, let's get, let's get back to it. Okay. So they're about an hour away from their little town. Oh yeah. Cause they leave. Cause they're like, we're not they attacking. Leave. Let's, yeah. let's go away now. And then Gawain really is having this existential crisis where he's like, where did we go wrong? Yeah. Like philosophically. We shouldn't be going on supply raids and killing scouts. These people, these younglings with him should be warders to Aes Sedai by now. Yeah. And who knows what Gawain should be doing. He certainly doesn't. Well, he's, I mean, okay. So like hypothetically, if Gawain became a warder, like if he was training the tower and then became a warder, I could see where he could like abdicate his role as first prince of the sword. Yeah. Well, that's what I was saying. Yeah, exactly. But like he's not, he's doing neither so when he's talking to his younglings here, he's like, oh, you guys should all be warders by now. Well, and then one of the guys here, Rajar. Yeah, we ha- he's, he's like, actually it's a not our lit. place to question the White Tower. Yeah, we wouldn't be good warders if we questioned Aes Sedai, but it's like. And Gawain's like, you're not a warder. We're not though. warders. <laughs> like, we should, we, that you guys should be. You should be warders. But you're not. And then you could say those words. But right, right. now, like, you're not. So, yes. like, do they hope to be? Because wandering around. Yeah. Killing some rebel scouts is not how. Yeah, and I mean, if we you really want to get into the nitty gritty of like when when Gawain says, "Where did we go wrong?" Yeah, I think I think we could pinpoint it probably roughly to when there was the coup happening. Yeah, and you were like, "I'm going to kill my mentors who are actively against this coup." Yes, it's like right there is probably then, where we could but start. But then also, yeah, I'm going to let the. Amerlin seat who's captive right now oh yeah go free yeah because min told me to like three hours later or yes. something yeah. yeah his flippy floppy wishy-washiness right. is the worst out of anything yeah for me that is that is his character yeah flippity flop flippity flop Wish, put him in snip, a washy snap, snip, snap. <laughs> wishy-washy <laughs> okay that's going yeah and now before they head back to dorlin he's going to think more about how Elida definitely wants him dead. Yeah. And he's not really sure what he should be doing right now. Yeah, because this is a literal impossible task to do what he's supposed to be doing, like the raiding force against the enemy army. Yeah. He can't do with 300 guys. No. And what's crazy is he has picked up on the fact that the enemy camp, the rebels, don't have any supply lines. So if you're going to siege a place, you need people constantly bringing in food and supplies to your gigantic friggin' army. Yeah. And he hasn't really seen that. He's like, oh, they've been doing these supply runs to the villages, but that's not enough to, like, supply the entire army. What's happening here? It's like gateways, my gateways. dude. Like, he doesn't know it. He doesn't know. But nah. the rebels know, and probably the White Tower can figure that out, too. Probably at this point, And yes. isn't telling him. No. And he's oh, like, no. I, I don't know. I yeah. don't I don't understand. Doesn't make any sense. Yeah. Do you think he still feels some sort of allegiance to Elida, who advised his mother, like while he was growing up? Yeah. Like is I, that part of it, maybe? It could be. It's because also... he even thinks like Elida definitely doesn't want me. Yeah. <laughs> like, he knows that. <laughs> he so... does. He he might feel allegiance there. He might feel allegiance to the White Tower because that's kind of his whole thing for supporting the coup was like, I'm supporting the institution of the White Tower. Mm, it's These... like he's in too deep. He's like, I'm supporting the White Tower. So now I always have to support the White Tower. Yeah. And I, even though I know it's not the right decision right now, yeah. I have to keep doing it anyway. Otherwise, it makes my past decisions wrong. Yes. Yeah. And, and... everything that I've done has been like actively harming the re- the right position. So, And that's why people yeah. think they're like, he, like dig their heels into these positions like he is. Yeah. Is because you don't want to have to like think back on all your other decisions you made in the past whatever year instead of just admitting like okay oh shoot i, I was messed wrong. up yeah this is actually the right path from now. this point forward i'm yeah, gonna, it's yeah. like there's none of that right now so mm. 
He's not ready to admit that everything he didn't said no. was wrong. He's just thinking, maybe I might change sides now. Maybe. Maybe. He's like, I probably should, <laughs> but I'm not going to. Yeah. That's yeah. really what this is. Yeah, exactly. All right. So well, that's. Uh, we'll see, Gawain. You, you can do it. You, whatever you're going to do, I believe you're going to do that. Yeah. Okay. Somehow, if what if Elaine gets like a message to him somehow? She tried. She's tried. I know, but... Remember, we did have her, like, writing multiple letters to, to Gawain. To the White Tower, though. Well, and to, like, send them different areas so that hopefully he would get them. Yeah. Like, there's a bunch that she sent out because she's like, you need to be here. Help, You have help. a job. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And Brigitte's like, yes, Yes, help. Help, <laughs> help. help. <laughs> <laughs> she also doesn't want your job, Gawain. No, she does not. Yeah. Okay, well, you know, he's doing the things. Well, let's see. Let's see. Yeah, this help. that's... I can't really... We get, no. Yeah, that's about it. <laughs> yeah. And who's to say (laughs) what Gawain's going to do or how he's going to help or very much hinder. Right. Everybody around him. Everybody around him. Who's to say? Elaine, Egwene, the rebels, the toy tower, (laughs) Bryn. (laughs) Okay. All right. All right. We did it. Okay. We we talked about that chapter. Yeah. Now, what's what's the timestamp? That was about twenty minutes. We we got about about twenty minutes. Okay, yeah, I Not can. Bad. I under, I know why. I know why you wanted to do more chapters. Whatever. Okay. Okay. Let's go to chapter five. Let's okay. Let's it. take a quick break and then we'll switch chapters. Okay. Okay. So we're back and we're going to talk about chapter five, a tale of blood, and our chapter symbol is like the birds and star. For yeah, the sea folk for the first little bit here. Yeah. Okay. It is a pretty funny interaction. I was looking forward to this one. This interaction's okay. I'm more looking to... Yeah, I know you are. Looking forward to talking about the, the second perspective. Okay. I like that one. Okay, but we are going to start with Rand. And Rand is like tramping through the grounds of his manor house. Right. The funny his... one on the title. Yeah. On the cover. Oh! It's the manor house, right? That's title, just like, this is where cover. we're at. Yeah. Right? Yep. Okay. Okay. Sure. That's why it's like, it doesn't really make, like the manor, it kind of looks like a spooky haunted mansion or something. Yeah, like, yeah. It's kind of weird, but okay. Okay. Yeah. Well, just he's with, with his whole... <laughs> entourage and he's heading through and we get a recap of bashir's army yeah that's like hanging out here they're not hanging out they're doing their fancy little horse well, that's maneuvers. what i mean yeah they're doing horse stuff but yeah. then also Make the, the horses go to the, the left tents are all and like neat. to the right yeah trampling mud stuffs you know horse stuff. stuff okay they're doing horse stuff cool i like yeah, it <laughs> it's fine now his whole entourage consists of maidens saldeans and i said i yeah he has some thoughts about Aes Sedai. Yep. Mm-hmm. But, Used to hate him. But the pattern wants him to have Aes Sedai with him. He has to have him anyways. Even if he doesn't like him, he's got to have him. he got to have him. They're all here. And he finally understands that what he wants doesn't matter. Right. Like you. Exactly. You figured out. Yeah. It <laughs> doesn't matter want. what I want. It's never whatever I want. <laughs> All right, but he also thinks it doesn't really help that the Aes Sedai near him have sworn oaths because they'll always find a way to do whatever they want anyway. I know, I love the comparison he brings up too because it's like the two Aes Sedai he does as a comparison here. Yeah. It's like comparison shopping. So we have, one hand we have Elsa. Yeah. Who is, do you remember Elsa? Secret Black Aja. Secret Black Aja, who's like but super who, dedicated to who, get him to the last battle. Yes. Because how will the Dark One defeat him? If he's not there. If he's not there. Yeah. So she is uber dedicated. Yeah. She's like, yeah, let's do this, Rand. Yeah. And he's like- Cool. Cool. I like you. I trust <laughs> yeah. everything about you and everything you say and do. Yeah. Even though she was like part of the Dumais Wells kidnapping, she's sworn oaths, yeah. but you know, it's fine. Yeah. And she's mended her ways. Sure. Yeah. Sure. And then we've got Corel. Yeah. Corley. Corley? Corelli? I don't know. Yeah. Okay. I guess. <laughs> Anyways, okay. it doesn't matter, but. She's kn- less predictable and hasn't sworn any oaths. Yeah. She's one of Catswin's lackeys. Yeah. But she did help save his life after the whole Pat and Fane stab stab thing. And. We get a whole recap on the yeah. stabby stab situation. There's actually a really fun spelling mistake here too. Not in the book. Fun. But in my notes. Oh. Because for Corel, I have that she's bonded to the Asherman Flynn mm-hmm. because she's bonded. Yes. But I didn't spell bonded. I said boned, which is also oh. technically probably accurate. That's pretty funny. All right. <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't think so. <laughs> He's like really old. So? <laughs> well. She's green. It's pretty much a given. I don't know about that <laughs> so much. Oh, wait. You know? Is she green? I don't even know. <laughs> I thought she was yellow. Didn't she oh, my goodness. the healing? Yeah, I think so. <laughs> yeah. Anyways, it's a given. Okay. It's happened. It's canon. It I don't happened. think so. I don't know. I don't think so. Anyway, so Rand thinks about the Fane wound. She is yellow. Sorry. Yeah, I know. Thanks. Okay. That's what I was just talking about, how he helped save her life. <laughs> so so distracted. Yeah. yeah. Anyway, now 
Don't forget that the Fain wound is over top of his Ishmael right. wound, and his wounds are going to bust open and spill blood all over the rocks of Shell Ghoul. That's the prophecy. That's one of the prophecies, though. But is it that his wounds are going to bust open? No. Like, it's... That's a new one for me. Well, no, no. Well, we know that his wounds open up. That's part of the whole issue with his side wounds. Well, they always do. Yeah. They open up, yeah. But, but we know about the blood on the, the... rocks of Shell Ghoul. Exactly. Situation. That's a problem. So he's like, oh, that makes sense. Like, probably, how else are you going to bleed all over the rocks of Shell Ghoul? I don't know. Any other way? That's true. Blood can come from pretty much anywhere. Pretty much anywhere in your body. <laughs> That's a good point. Yeah. And if something else doesn't kill him, then these side wounds will. For sure. Because again, like his body is not doing well. No. Mm-mm. We need to find some other sort of healing, you know? N- no. Yeah. Antibiotics or something? Like what are you talking about? Yeah. Well, some other kind of magical healing that they don't know about yet. Okay. Yeah. New, 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 new healing. different healing. Well, there already was new different healing. We've well, done no, that. no, no, I know, but new, newer, yeah, differenter <laughs> healing. <laughs> what about healing? What that's what newer? What about what if the Forsaken know of healing dark wounds? Okay, right. You know what? Okay, okay. Because uh-huh. like the wounds kind of like two negatives should make a positive and Just cut it out of them. Is uh- that what you get? <laughs> <laughs> scoop it out like an ice cream scoop. No, like if we use some more like dark magic, on... like the true power. Is that what we're trying to get oh, at here? Maybe. There's literally a, there's literally the dark Ooh, one's powers, the true power. Let's heal with that, and then he'll be fine. Okay. Probably, probably a little psycho, but he's already there, so you're right. Yeah. Who cares? Not me. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So <laughs> now I really like what happens next because he thinks about Matt. Oh yeah. And he gets his color swirl thing. Yeah. And he stopped trying to shove it away, and he's actually using it. To but know he where also, his friends are. He also braids himself because he's like, oh, it's just another tool that I'm going to use. Yeah. It's like, yeah, worry. man, use the they're tool. They're doing it too. And they're watching you bone your girlfriend. <laughs> All the time. All the time. <laughs> okay. Yeah. But he sees Matt. Yeah. Dicing or something. Yeah. He's like gambling. in the forest. He's not. He's with the, the band. He's not in the forest anymore. Right. So. Yeah. But he doesn't see the small dark skinned woman anymore. Right. And he's wondering, who is she? Where did she go? Right. And that annoys me because I was like, ah, you caught a glimpse of what Tuan should look like. Sure. Because of Semarag. Yeah. And you've seen the small dark woman with Matt. Sure. And you're not connecting it, and that annoys me. Well, I mean, like, there's... <laughs> I know it's not realistic for him to actually... I would like it better if it was like, ah, she looks familiar and I can't place it. You know? Okay, yeah, I can like see that, that too. Yeah, it's yeah, like, yeah. ah, who is that girl? You yeah. Know, like, nah. He really didn't see her for that long. It's like in context. It's just I like no, I just I that's want the context. Him, I want him to know. You it's know? a real life thing. You don't recognize people. Yeah. In different... Anyway, the vision fades, and he hopes that Matt comes back to him soon because he's gonna need his skills. Yes, the tactical skills at Shale Ghoul. Yeah. So, but that, that's an important line. I don't want to talk agree. about that for a second. So, number one, he again berates him. So he's like, "Ah, oh, use every all my friends' <laughs> tools." Well, yeah. Anyways, yes, but. Does this mean that Rand is sort of formulating a last battle strategy? Because he's like, hey, I need Matt back to me soon. I need his skills I mean, at Shale Ghoul, which is a very specific place. I know. That's not like a just a rant. That's like no, Shale Ghoul I is think, a very. I mean, at this point, he has to come up with some kind of game plan. Like a battle plan? Kind of. Which makes sense. Like, battle but... plan is like get Matt to plan the battle. <laughs> yeah, but the problem is yeah. it's all speculation at this point. Sure. And so I think you would rather have something planned than nothing okay okay right yeah and i think he just assumes that's where it's gonna be and that kind of makes sense like the whole mm-hmm. mount doom situation yep. like we know that there's a yeah there's like an actual well, physical well, location we're gonna fight the dark one yeah we probably should go to where the dark one resides right because he's not like he, oh, he doesn't technically he's... live in the in mount doom that's a, that's where the it's the thinnest between well, exactly reality it's not like he can just like walk somewhere you know well i mean like we've seen the forsaken like walk down so if all the forsaken die does the dark one still have power probably oh yeah probably yeah why wouldn't he well i don't know i don't know if it's like a whole like oh they hold all his power and so no i mean i pretty definitively we can say no okay because he's got like shider haran and doesn't care about the other forsaken so well let's move on okay all right that's fair okay so rand is gonna make his way to the traveling grounds yeah they all set him up here. Yep. And a messenger comes up to him and he has a letter from Darlin in Tear. Right. And Darlin is like, hey, what's the plan? Do you have any updates? 
because what's happening? Yeah. So last time we left, it, Rand's message to Darlin was like, hey, make an army <laughs> and then get ready to go to Air Domen. Yeah. And then Darlin's like, hey, I got the army. What are we doing here? Yeah. And then Rand's message is like, yeah, make your army and I'll let you know when to make, come. Make it bigger. Keep keep going. The Relax. last battle's coming soon. Yeah. So like everybody, keep training, chill, and when I want you, I will get you. Yeah. yeah. Just relax. Okay. People don't know how to do that. I know. Uh, does nobody know how to follow orders? Oh, man. Uh. I wish. I wish everyone just followed Rand's orders. Okay. But now we have sea folk coming out of a gateway, right? Uh, well, there's some sea folk like going through a gateway or something, and then like Harine's here. Anyways, I thought Harine was coming out of the gateway Maybe. to have a meeting with Rand. Yeah, that's possible too. Who knows? It it doesn't matter. Okay, there's some people going through and coming out, and it's like there's sea folk around, and Harine's here, so it's fine. Uh, okay. Yeah. Well, remind me who Harine is. Okay, so she's the one who made the bargain with Rand, and then the sea folk didn't really care for it, so she got like stripped and. Turned upside down naked and beaten. And then she was the one when Logan went to the meeting with the Sea Folk. And Logan was like, hey, Rand needs all your ships to do the stuff. And that's when we found out about, about the Tremal King mass suicide. And then the Sea Folk were like, ah, oh, we got to go to Tremal King. And Logan was like, nah, no. we got the last battle. You can grieve later, but grieve on the march to Tarman Guide or whatever. Yeah. And they're like, ah, oh, heartless, but okay, we get it. So then Logan was like, oh, also, by the way, because Harin used to be the ambassador to Rand. That's why she made the bargain. But the Sea Folk were like, Harin, you suck at bargaining so you you don't get to do that anymore and then Logan came back and he was like hey Rand wants Harine back because he's used to her and then the sea folk were all like oh no that's terrible and then here in this scene Rand's like what I thought I did everything right I made Harine my ambassador again because like I didn't have one for a while yeah why are they like, mad at that uh she probably incurred a bunch of toe or, or some, whatever, whatever. Honor is among the sea folk who cares about her culture yeah like Rand doesn't have time for this <laughs> he's got so many he's things like, to worry uh, about other cultures are so confusing well because he thinks he's doing what they want which is have an ambassador yeah. to the sea folk with him yeah and he's like what did she get a promotion or something is yeah. that why they don't want her here is because she's too high rank no what could be too high of a rank to meet with me the core more and yeah, it's like I'm no the best. yeah <laughs> it's like no she basically got demoted and then you were like nope she's coming back and yeah. they just hate it they didn't like that all right okay that's what happened <laughs> all right so that's so, her yeah yeah okay so rand has a question for her and he asks where the heck are the sea folk ships that were promised? <laughs> yeah, that we whole little game food. meeting. <laughs> we need food for Air Domen. Yeah. And Harine's like, yeah, well, they're coming. Yeah, like they're fast, but they're not like gateways. They're yeah. not <laughs> some magical traveling. And Ron's like, I'm so impatient. I want results now because people die when you're slow. And he, okay, so he has some point because people are dying. We need food. And we have some, so that's the kind of the weird thing right now happening with the pattern too, is like bad stuff happens in some places, good stuff happens in others. We've got some storehouses that all the food is like bad, but tier is still pumping off food. Like, kind yeah, of like yeah. there's some areas that are still doing good. But and, it's like, oh, my food over there is going bad while people are hungry here. Yeah. And we got to get the food from there to over here. But she makes a good point where she's like, okay, we literally have to go through the waters that the Shanshan control. Yeah. So we can't just get here. Yeah. It does take time. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Anyways. Unless you're just going to like gateway wagon loads. Right. Like do that. Or like your plan, boats. Gateway boats. Yeah. yeah. Boat gateways. Boat gateways. Boat ways. I don't think there's anything wrong with that. Yeah. Literally nothing. I see nothing <laughs> Why wrong doesn't with it work? <laughs> okay. Anyways. Rand does a good thing. He does a good job. Well, he, he moderates changes his tone. He, uh, thinks. he thinks he does. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And then he's like, hey, why were you punished for your part in the bargain? Or, well, he's like, were you? Oh, yeah. Were you punished? Were you but punished? How did that go? And she's like. Was that bad for you? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it was bad. And then she's like, oh. Yeah. Didn't mean to say that. <laughs> this is the Tavirin pulling the answers out of, because yeah. she would never have told him, like, oh, yeah, I got strung upside down naked and beaten till I was, like, hollering. Yeah. And he's like, oh, shoot. Oh, no. <laughs> yeah. And then he's like, okay, well, I have another question for you. How do the sea folk treat men who can channel? And Harine's like, no, I'm not answering that one. No way. And then Rand is like, I'll make you a bargain. I'll answer one question of yours if you answer one of mine. And Harine's like, two. Two. And Rand's like, one. Yeah. But it's I'm going to be honest about it right as honest as i can be yeah which is like a really good way to phrase things with people yeah okay so <laughs> harina's is like all right rand we kill him yeah they die and yeah. they have a choice about how they die yeah desert island or drowning drowning immediately yeah you which had... would you take 
Desert Island. Yeah. Drowning is scary. <laughs> Even though it's more shameful. It's more shameful to go to the desert desert island. Yeah. I'm still well, doing desert island. I mean like you die a lot slower. That's probably. okay. Not drowning. <laughs> I can like kill myself in my own way. Sure. On a desert island, you know? For the most part. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, no food and water. Yeah. That part kind of sucks. Yeah. But uh yeah, I don't wanna drown. Yeah. That sounds worse. Same here. Okay. Okay. Same page, same page. <laughs> I don't like talking about that. All right. Okay. So Anyway, that's what happens for these. And Rand's like, okay, well, sounds, stop it. He does think like sounds about the same. I just want to do a quick recap for that too, because it's kind of interesting. Rand goes through like the headspace of, hey, with men who can channel. So we've got Randland people. If you're not being gentled by like the Red Aja, whatever, because they clearly don't get a lot of people. Yeah. They're not that good at their jobs. The Red Aja suck. Yeah. That's why we have like a thousand men already at the Black Tower. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. So, <laughs> all right. <laughs> all right. That. Uh-huh. <laughs> It's like there's some people who are like, I'm 60. Yeah. <laughs> like Damer Flynn. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah. He's like, I just chat a little to do all my chores. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, so, okay. So, otherwise, we can probably assume, like, people either get, like, executed or run out of the village and then they, like, die on their own, whatever. Like, the, he, Rand does think, okay, yeah, the sea folk do that, but that sounds very similar to what everybody else does. Yeah. I just wanted to quiz you real quick because the only other big faction we have is the Aiel. Yeah, send them to the Blight. Oh, you do remember. Okay, yeah. that's what I was going to ask. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Because their whole thing is like, oh, yeah, we go to the Blight and then we, like, I guess try and we try and kill the Dark One or, like, fight as many or people. Or fight as many trolls as we can and then they just die. Yeah. 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 That was a qu- I thought it was going to be diff- more difficult. But... Oh, no, that one I know. Okay. Yep. I never know what you know. <laughs> <laughs> that's good. Okay. Yeah, that one I know. All yeah, right. That, that's the end of it. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> but then he tells Harin, you got to stop it. Right. You can't do it anymore. And yeah. She said, no well, okay well, okay well i'll certainly tell them yeah so this is the fresher anything because he's yeah. like hey sidene is cleansed now right i did yeah, it and i did she's it like, i and think she's like yeah logan told us that yeah but um we don't doubt that you believe it's yeah. cleansed <laughs> and then Rand is super frustrated oh man and he's like muttering to himself well he's <laughs> 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 he's having a conversation with like loose theron sort of but then he's like also talking to himself yeah out loud and then we get this whole thing about how he's not willing to banish loose theron from his mind and i'm like do you even have that option yeah Rand? well he goes on the whole thing like oh i've done such an amazing feat from like no- nothing's been seen as good as this since the age of legends he like does like a name oh dropping and thing. he's like so upset that no jorlin corbison he's uh, like i thought everyone would freaking love this right everyone would be so excited and no one even believes me and yeah like, yeah. You're right, Ren. No one believes you. Yeah. Yeah. So anyways, it's frustrating for him. And I kind I like I do understand it. I do get it. It's frustrating because this is a theme we've seen with Rand since like the beginning where he wants to leave the world a better place. Yeah. And he's trying to find ways to do that. And he's going to circle back to that in a couple of minutes here. But before we do that, Rand has to figure out what Harine's question is. Oh, yeah. And we're going to save it for later. You just save it for later. I got to think later. about it. I got to yeah. think of a good one. You're going to owe me one giant favor at a time of my choosing. No, question. Yeah. One giant question. Yep. There you go. Yeah. But turns out Rand doesn't have time for any of this. Yeah. He calls over Flynn and then gets frustrated because Flynn is bonded to Coralie and she's causing a bit of a rift in the hierarchy here. Yeah. He's like, ah, he's my Asherman, but it's like, ah, well, also he's her warder. Yeah. 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 There's that. Yeah. So Rand wants to know. What some of the I said I think about the cleansing. And Elsa's like, well, if you say it's cleansed, it probably is. Well, she's like, it's it would improper. Be improper to express <laughs> doubt where yeah. others can hear it. And yeah. that's why he's like, oh, that's an I said I answer for sure. So even though she's Black Aja, yeah. he's thinking. Well, and then Crowley's like, we were at Chatter Loga. That we know. We saw it. Yeah. <laughs> the, yeah. And even when I channel through Flynn. Yeah. The taint is gone, but. It still sucks. It's so crazy. But yeah. I mean, they have like really good points here because Elsa's like, hey, okay, so it's uh, it's been a heck of a long time where male channelers go crazy. It's not going to be solved overnight. Yeah. Like we're not going to convince the entire world that male channels are now like we're cool. Yeah. When because... especially when Rand is so super crazy. Well, and also we have like the literal Black Tower popping up here. Yeah. And now it doesn't look like Mazram Taim is a good guy necessarily. Nope. Definitely Holy no. So it's not going to really help, but it took decades, apparently, during the breaking, like For decades, everyone to believe. Yeah, that everyone was doomed because yeah. there's always going to be like, oh, it's not all of them that are going to go yeah. crazy and die and kill everyone. Yeah. 
I understand that pushback too. So it's just like you're you're pushing really hard in the other direction. It's a very realistic reaction to the cleansing. Yeah. And that's what's frustrating. Yeah. All right. So now after that whole conversation, Rand is watching some of the soldiers do just menial work. Right. And he says, I envy them sometimes and explains to Finn, nope, Flynn, that's his name. Right. That people in the camp may be under orders and have all these tasks to do and it looks like they're not free, but they technically can go whenever they want and go do whatever they want with their lives. They're more free than him. But Rand can't do whatever he feels like. Freedom is an illusion. And then we get a Moraine name drop because he starts thinking about things Moraine told him. Right. Okay. Because... She's coming back this book is I what you said. I certainly hope so. Yeah. Yeah, that would be great if that happened. She's with us in spirit. Does that count? Yeah. No. <laughs> <laughs> no, it doesn't. <laughs> yeah, no, it counts. Okay. Yeah. But then all of this is interrupted because one of the scouts come up and say that there has been an IEL spotted about half a mile down the slope. And then Rand is like, oh, yeah? And did they wave at you? He's super sarcastic. <laughs> so it's good that his sarcasm And they're like, what? Works. No? Yeah. And then Rand's like, they're IEL. If they saw you, that means they wanted to be seen, and that means they're allies. So tell Bashir that Ruark and Bale are coming, and we're going to secure Eridovin now. Nice. Except that we just had Ruark not too long ago being like, what does that even mean? But that's what How the meeting is about. How do you want us to do that? That's the meeting, okay. right? This is the meeting. This is the meeting. We're going to figure out what Ran- what does Rand want. Who knows? <laughs> we're going to find out. Yeah. <laughs> possibly in this meeting. Maybe. Okay. All right. So that's it for Rand for now. Yeah. And we're not quite there yet. Remember when we had the Avienda perspective and I was like, ah, I thought they were getting there to see Rand. Oh, yeah. We're almost there. Almost. We're so close to this meeting. Yeah. Is Rand going to be super awkward about the meeting? I don't know. I want to see the Avienda Min connection. Yeah. Forum or bond. Because Avienda was like, hey, I will deal with her. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. I'm interested in how Rand is going to deal with that on top of everything else. Right. Because he hasn't seen Avienda in a very long time. It's been a minute. Yeah. Okay. Since the bond, since they bonded him. Yeah. And then he got Elaine pregnant. Right. And then he took off. Exactly. Didn't even say bye to Avienda. Yeah. And yeah. now he's had like all this alone time with men for a long time. Oh, Where's yeah. Where's Avienda's alone time? Yeah. And Avienda also has to get pregnant at some point, right? That's part of it. I mean, hypothetically. Well, that's what Min said. Well, I mean, there was something weird about the babies. Oh, right. Right? It's like, oh, it's like four. There's four But like, it's weird. It's like different. Yeah. Anyways. Yeah. Oh, right. Okay. Whatever. Guess we'll find out. Yeah. Okay. All right. Time to take a quick break and then we'll come back for the last really cool perspective. Yeah. Sounds good. Okay. So we're back and we are changing perspectives into... Cat Swain. Yeah, here we go. Yeah. Now, I have to say, the way this perspective starts off, it had me raising an eyebrow. At what? Well, because it's like, tell us about Grandel's plans. And then r- you find out you're in Cat Swain's perspective, and it's too quick. Oh, okay. And I was like, why? What Grandel? What does Cat Swain have to do with Grandel's plans? And then I was like, "Is she Black Aja? Oh my God! Like, is this the reveal?" And I was like, "Ah, no! I never even." It also helps if you know who Maurice is. Yeah. Well, and I didn't really like. I'm bad at reading sometimes, and when things are exciting, I'm like, "You go too fast." I'm like, "What? What? What's happening?" Right? And then I have to go back and start again, and I'm like, "Oh, it wasn't. It wasn't that. This is just a interrogation session that's going." badly oh my god this is <laughs> well okay just so frustrating it's going badly for some people for others it's going quite well like samurai like it's going samurai. quite well for it's going samurai. well for samurai <laughs> yeah 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 okay okay so cat's ways in the middle of watching maurice do a fantastic job of questioning samurai right okay. tell us about grando tell us tell us about her yeah and her plans those things yeah please <laughs> yeah and Cat Swain is just casually sipping on tea, but internally, she's very frustrated. Right. Yep. Now, we get a description that Semarog is currently being hung upside down in the air with her arms tied behind her back, and she's being shielded by three additional Aes Sedai outside of the room as well. Right. So does that mean Cat Swain and Maurice are also holding so, her? It sounds like that. It's not exactly clear, but okay. also there's a line where it says she's being shielded by two more than is necessary. Or- 
by two more than is necessary. Yeah. And I'm pretty sure like it would be three. That's like the minimum. Oh, so, three? Really? I thought maybe one. To well, hold that shield. sounds crazy to yeah. have like the minimum against Semarog to have oh, one. Like, yeah. Okay. Right. I maybe. have to assume that there's five people. Yeah. Maybe, but they're also dumb, so... That's true. That's a good point. Yeah. Because it's not really stated, and it's not immediately clear. Yeah. So... And at this point, I think Samurag is completely capable of breaking free, and... Really? Yeah, maybe. Even with... Okay, so... But here's the thing. We've seen Rand with LTT in his brain while he was in the box. Yeah. And the entire thing was while there is a, an active shield being actively held, yeah. you cannot break those little knots. Right. But if it's tied off, then you can break those knots. Is that how Mogedian got out of her shield when Nynaeve had her shielded? Exactly. Okay. Like, possibly that's a very good explanation for it. Okay. But that's the point, is... There is a tradition with Aes Sedai that you have to actively maintain a shield. Mm. We got that. And the Aes Sedai don't know why okay. that's the thing. Yeah. Like why that's the tradition. Right. But we know that because of Rand. Probably. And it makes sense. Like I, oh, Age of Legends, Aes Sedai would know that you have to actively yes. maintain the shield for it to be unbreakable. Right. So. Yeah. Katswin does worry like this entire chapter like maybe she has um, some sort of like oh yeah I don't know crazy she's toying with them no matter yeah, what like, she's uh, completely toying with them does she have like a break the shield weave I don't know yeah they don't even know they don't have no idea and she's just like waiting to be rescued or what yeah. but instead of answering the question about Grandal Semarog says do you know what happens to a man when his blood is replaced with something else this is the tale of blood yeah he dies of uh, course <laughs> Yeah, I know. It's of course a good, he dies. It's a good line. <laughs> but now Semarag goes on a little story time about how she invented the weave that can pull all the blood from the body at the same time as like transfusing like a different solution back in. Right. And she's even come up with some kind of solution that keeps someone alive for a couple hours. Yeah. That's good. Well, I think but it was like an hour. But they're in a lot of pain. Yeah, it was like an hour. Yeah, whatever it is. But I just have like a little thing here. Yeah. I got to assume that the weave is a little bit more clinical because the way she describes it, she's like, I have a weave that can pull the blood out of you and then put it in a bin. Yeah. And it's like, what does the bin look like? Is it like a, yeah. I, I think like sterile, like medical facility room. Like oh, even yeah. as if it's a torture chamber. Like, yeah. Well, because the thing about. Like what kind of bin are you depositing yeah. all the blood into? Well, the thing about channeling though for the most part is it's magic yeah i know but even if let's say my clothes are all wet from the rain sure when i dry them the water goes on the floor it right it doesn't just like go nowhere right and so it's like okay i'm gonna remove all your blood but there's still all that blood in a bin and so she's like yeah it goes in a bin what kind of bin i don't know a tupperware <laughs> a big one one of those big storage tupperwares <laughs> That has yeah. enough. How many liters of blood is in a human body? Search it. Twelve. Way to get put on the FBI watch list. Yeah. <laughs> Twelve is your guess? I don't I think know. more than that. Really? Yeah. Okay, you searched it? I did. Five. Oh. Five less? liters. Okay. Oh, that's actually not that much. I mean, I'm trying to look at myself. No, but in terms of like putting it in a bin, five mm -hmm. liters is not much. Hold on. Hold on. Okay. No, no, no. Women tend to have a lower blood volume than men. However, a woman's blood volume increases by roughly 50% during pregnancy. Oh, I did know that. Okay. So, if you round up the nearest 12, it's 12, 12 <laughs> liters. <laughs> okay. Anyway, Semarog wants Maurice to know that she is going to show her the weave someday. Right. Hmm. That's the, in That's uh, the intimidation threat. line. Well, it's like, I'm going to do it on you. Oh, right. Yeah. Yeah. It's pretty scary. Yeah. It, it is. It's a good, it's a good scary line. Well, and here's the thing about having Semarog there to torture. Like, this isn't Mogedian who's just going to start sharing everything under a little bit of threat. Yeah. Because that happened. Yeah. Right? Yeah. And, like, it's not as Modian. Like, this is Semarog. <laughs> this is the worst one you could possibly have to try to get any information out of. I mean, to be fair, the girls also used the Adam. I know. And that's going to come back here in a second. Yeah. So that's there's, true. There's the, and I mean, you also have the option of like not letting Semarog go on this story time. Yeah. You could stop her from talking. Yeah. If but then that would be like admitting that she's scaring you. Right. Or I don't know. Like I'm not a professional interrogator. Like I'm no, going to admit not? that. Okay. I'm not. I've never done it. Okay. But I have to assume you exert a little bit of control by being like, nope, you don't get to talk unless you're answering my questions. Like you could yeah. do that too. 
You don't have to listen to her to prove a point. No, but every time she goes to talk, she'll just start talking about this. I guess so. Like, it would just go... Like, you're not breaking... What's the solution, then? What do we do? Kill her. No, but... Straight no, up no, no, no. execution. Nope, nope. Yes. and Catswain's gonna explain why. No, Catswain's wrong. No, but she... But, okay, sure. She's wrong. I'm not saying I disagree with you. I also am on the whole, like, let's bail fire her bail so fire the shit out of get her. Rand's hand back. Like, yeah. <laughs> Well, like, it's I'm too late on... for that now, I think. Well, th- how hard is it? How hard it w- are you going to bail for? <laughs> wouldn't it have to have been, like, in the moment? Well, I mean, yeah, that's the theory. And then you get, the like, theory. your moments back. That's the theory. Not, like, weeks or however long unless it's you, been. you Unless you're going to, like, uh, Volcano Mountain bail fire ki- Simrock. <laughs> like, well, maybe. and then, like, the whole world is fucked at that right. point. Well, yeah. give him his hand back. That's yeah. all I'm saying. No. Okay. No. Anyways... This interrogation is going badly. It's going bad. So Cat Twain steps in before things die, like derail completely. Right. And she weaves air around Semarog's head to block out sound and then puts two little balls of light in front of her eyes. So she <laughs> Not can't too bright. See. You don't want to blind her. But, no. You know. And I mean, like, yeah, blind her. Yeah. That would be better. She don't need her eyes. No. That'd be great. That'd be a great thing to do with the four second. Yeah. You just want her for information. Yeah. She doesn't need her eyes to talk. Nah, but that would be torture. Mm, but you know whoops, what also? Okay. You know what also Shoot. is torture, honestly? Hanging someone upside down. Right. In the middle of a room. Right. Questioning them. Right. Like, how is that not torture? All oh, the blood rush into your head? Yeah. Come on. Well. Okay. It's the def. It's how the Aes Sedai are interpreting it. I know. But now Maurice is annoyed because Catswain had to step in and Catswain's like, I don't care. You're losing control of this situation. And then Maurice is like, nothing is working. (laughs) Nothing is working. She just has so many gruesome threats. And then Catswain's like, we can figure out a way to break her. We could do it. We could do it, guys. And Maurice is like, yeah, but she lived for 3,000 years. And Catswain's like, yeah, hardly. Not really. (laughs) Not even. She's probably younger than me. Yeah. Well, also... Okay, this is a good philosophical moment to talk about this, yeah. too, because when they were bound in Shale Ghoul, right, it's not like she's been actively alive for 3,000 years. Yeah. Catswin does say, like, hey, she's probably in some sort of trance or, like, a coma-esque, you know, hibernation yeah. thing. Like, the, we did actually see one of the Forsaken who was a little bit closer to reality, Turtle Shell Face oh, yeah, Balthamel, mm-hmm. right? If you remember from Eye of the World, if you get trapped closer to, the, to reality, it's not so good on your looks. Yeah. So Semarag, you have to assume she was, like, pretty deep in there. Right. She's okay. looking okay. Sure. So, okay. Okay. So then Catswing starts to think about, like, how back in my day, kids weren't so soft. <laughs> love it. I love it. <laughs> yeah. And now the tower's all weak and everyone's, like, soft. Everyone and sucks. Yeah. And bickering and they suck. They all need to get penises They and all stuff. got bullied into swearing fealty to Rand. Right. Yeah. Because, okay, and it's funny because Catswin's thoughts previously were like, they she was angry, but she's like, ah, maybe there's some Tavir and stuff. I don't know. And now she's like, ah, screw it. <laughs> well, she's really angry right now. Yeah. This isn't going well. Yeah. But here's the thing. She's getting so old, she doesn't have time for anybody's bullshit anymore. Oh, yeah. She's like, ah, oh, I should have grown more patient with age, but if anything, I'm just... So irritated with everybody. I got less time. I got no time. No yeah. time. So Catswain reiterates that Samara can and will be broken because she's not going to allow a person who knows the weaves from the Age of Legends to just go off and be executed. Boom. There we and go. And I'm like, no, it's better if she's just executed. Nope. Like, knowledge at this point is not the answer. No. Because she's literally going to just murder everybody if she somehow finds a way to be free. We need weaves. Yeah, but... Come on. We need weaves. Yeah, no. This is so dumb. <laughs> anyway, so we're going to oh, I'll pull every scrap of knowledge from her that we can. Oh, yeah, because she's just going to give you knowledge. Yeah. She's just going to, oh, she's going to give you the weaves to pull blood from somebody's body. It's good weaves. And she's going to show you on Maurice. Right. By the way. It's a, we're willing to, we're willing to risk it. Oh, my gosh. And then Maurice is like, well, let's just use the Adam. The Adam? Yeah. Adam? 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 It depends on Whatever. who's saying it. Yep. It depends on which the audio collar. <laughs> the collar. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but Rand's like, no, no torture. And so we like, can't. Okay, so the Adam is torture. Right. But having her shielded 100% of the time and bonded by air, like that's not torture? Yeah. Is, isn't an Adam like a... basically the same thing? Well, no, because it's like also using that to torture her. But if they use it to hold her sure so that she can't channel on her own yeah, and she, she could, can't just like leave her room they could do that like too. literally what's the difference between active shielding hey, and imprisonment i'm just saying and having an edem on i'm just honestly. saying you have a good point 
I'm just not gonna... Like, if you don't use it to physically harm her, yeah. and you just use it to hold her in place, and that's so she can't channel... It's people's interpretations of it. That's the issue. Well, it's the same thing. I, and also, I know. just torture her. Like, she would have no qualms with torturing you. Yeah. Literally zero. She but, would like okay, to do that. But that's a good point. That's her so, favorite thing. Let's torture her, but that's the that's the next point that we're going to talk about here. Because Katzwin comes to realization, like, hey, we're dealing with Samurag, person out of, like, basically legend here. Oh, and Katzwin's like, it's I'm not... the same as her. Me and her, we're, we're the, the same. We're the same. And if I was going to get information out of myself, how would I do that? Yeah. But she does think, like, torture is not going to work on Samurag. No. We've got to do something different. So what's the solution? How do we get information out of her? What, I don't know. What do we do? Probably the eye down thing will work. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Maybe. Well, that's off the table, though. Well, maybe it won't be if Katzwin is like, listen, Rand. Right. Here's how you get information out of me. Okay. <laughs> how about compulsion? Except nobody knows how yeah. to do that. <laughs> Teach me the weave for compulsion. Yeah. Baron, yeah. come on over with your garbage You're thoughts. Like, your, gar- your garbage weave. Come here. <laughs> Oh my, oh my gosh. She was doing her best. I just need like 45 minutes to an hour to do my garbage weaves here. Yeah. <laughs> and Samurag. And I'll get like this loosey goosey, like, hey, don't be mean to Ren. Yeah. Compulsion. <laughs> yeah. Oh, man. she did her best, okay? Well, she did good. Don't be so hard on her. No, I think that she did great. Yeah. <laughs> Considering that it was like illegal. Yeah. <laughs> I think she did excellent. I'm proud of Aaron. I oh, think that was great. Okay. Okay. This is good. All right. All now, right. Catswain hates admitting failure. But it's not fa- it's not failure yet. But okay. We're not, we're not there yet. I haven't quite admitted it yet. Yeah. We're clo- we're real close. Yeah. Yeah. But we're going to switch gears for a minute because a woman just like it's, shows up. No, it's Corel. Oh, Corel shows it's up. It's literally the one. Oh, right. I yeah, missed that. Okay. It's her. Yeah. So she co- shows up and is like, hey, listen, Rand is going to meet with the Ayel chiefs. So Semarog needs to be taken back to her room or wherever she's being kept. Yeah. And now we have to go deal with the boy. Yeah, here we go. Okay, so the longer we hold on to Samarog, the worse this is going to be. That's my question. So, like, okay, yeah. so our, okay, we've talked about how you might potentially break Samarog, which is, like, no clue. But is it even on the table? Like, is breaking no. Samarog an option here? No, because Catswain is, like, anyone can be broken. And short of being forced to be a Demani for, like, an extended period of time. Like, let's look at Egwene, for example. She's an excellent example sure. of somebody who does not break when they should, right? Yeah. Just with the whole, like, being beaten and tortured, like, that sort of thing. It's like the beating doesn't thing doesn't work. work. Yeah. It doesn't work. Well, that's and, why the torture thing probably won't work on Samurai. Yeah. It's like, it's, it's not, it's not going to work. No. And this questioning thing, like, it's just, she's toying with you more than you're toying with her. Yeah. And so, Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. All of it just feels stupid to me and they should kill her. Okay. She should be executed. Like literally on site. The fact that we're like, let's get information from her. So she's a literal forsaken and you're like steps away from the last battle. Yeah. Take her off the board. Yeah. I get it. Okay. How does it end? What do you, not what you want to happen. Oh, she is going to be set free. Okay. She's oh, yeah. Getting, she's getting because Martin yeah. was like, leave her there for a couple weeks and then we'll deal with her. Yeah. Right? And there's no actual threat of death here no. with Samarog. Like, she's not worried about being tortured. She's not worried about dying. No. Because they're not showing those cards at all. No. So she just has to play a waiting game here. Yeah. I wonder if they're going to make her think that she's going for execution or something. You know what I mean? Something like that. Okay. But, like, actually do it. Like a fake out. Yeah. Like a big fake out. Yeah. Literally walk her to the gallows type of situation. Right. But she knows about transmigration, but maybe she won't get a chance to do that. Dark One doesn't always do that for you. No, especially if you've like been captured. It's not guaranteed. And... He doesn't like that. Yeah. Doesn't like that. Yeah. Yep. <sighs> well, okay. and they're also letting her sleep so she also can have dream world meetings. Yeah, that's right? true. That's so true. So there's, uh, this is just all bad. <laughs> I just, it's all bad. Yeah, I don't, really yeah. am against keeping really 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 bad guys as prisoner right i think that's the worst thing we can do i get it okay well you got two <laughs> and next next episode we're doing two again oh two chapters you mean chapter six I was and like, seven yeah what other forsaken do we have captured oh right yeah now? no two chapters no. <laughs> that's i mean that's that's the end of it so yeah. it's like that is yeah all right okay so chapter six and seven next time around mm-hmm. looking forward to that let's and keep, let's keep plugging away through this book let's go all right okay Happy New Year. Happy New Year. Here we are. (laughs) All right. So before you go ahead and be completely wrought with indecision, I'm going to say that this is part of the pattern now. Yeah, it's part of the pattern. 
Well, that's the end of another fun episode. Thanks so much for listening, everyone. The Wheel Weaves is hosted and edited by Danny and Brett and produced by Danny and Brett with Passion Socks, Cody Feltz, Benjamin, Jamie Young, Megan, Jared Berg, Ricky Morissette, Adam, Mozyme, Marta Thier, Michelle Forbes, MKM, Antoine Benoit, Lawrence Bradley, Colby T, and Gabby Young with music by Audionautics. Be sure to check out our Patreon page if you're interested in supporting us on the podcast. We'd love to send you some Patreon-exclusive merchandise as a thank you. Plus, you'll gain access to our episodes earlier than everyone else. And at the time of recording, we have over 45 bonus episodes for your listening pleasure. Find all that and more at patreon.com slash the wheel weaves podcast. For general information about our show and information like how to send us shot glasses, how to join the discord or how to get in touch with us, visit the wheel weaves podcast.com. And as always, please be sure to give us a five star review because it really does make a really huge difference in helping other people find us. And Tell a friend, Riyad, because referrals really are the best compliment. Thanks so much for listening. This really is part of the pattern now.